Hi, I'm Effie and this is What Effie Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a tag that I saw on Maddie at Book Browsing Blog's channel. It is the What Do You con Consider a Spoiler Tag? This was a tag that was put together by Gunpowder Fiction and Plot and I'm very much looking forward to doing it. Sorry about that, I've decided that I don't feel like me without my glasses on so apologies for the reflection but I guess we're going to have to put up with it. The first question is what do you consider a spoiler? Um, and this one's quite a tricky one because I like to go into my books knowing as little as possible. I often won't even read the blurb, partially because a lot of books are over blurbed, but partially because I just like going in not really knowing anything. What I will say is representation and trigger warnings are not spoilers. People that need trigger warnings, and I include myself in that, are perfectly valid to want trigger warnings in their literature. I've read some books that thankfully didn't have the kind of things that I need a trigger warning for, but definitely you would want a trigger warning for. And with representation, it's so hard to find good representation for things. So yes, 100% tell people that there's this representation in books, especially because once I read a book and obviously I'm not going to say what the book is because this whole tag is about spoilers, but I read a book where they included a queer character just for the purposes of the twist ending and it infuriated me and also made it incredibly difficult to review the book. Okay, so the second question is, does the genre that you're reading impact what you consider to be a spoiler? And I would say no. I think this is something that I will cycle back to in a later question but a spoiler is a spoiler is a spoiler in my opinion. This next question is all the best bits are in the trailer. Sometimes a synopsis can be too detailed. Do you research books prior to reading them or do you prefer to know nothing about the book? I think this is a really difficult one. Um, I don't explicitly research books, but if I think that it may contain stuff that's going to be problematic or triggering, I will ask people or even go on the Storygraph and see what other users have input for content warnings. But generally, I will go in with as little knowledge as possible. Okay, let's see what the next question is. Sometimes the introduction or translator's notes can spoil the ending, especially for classics. Has this ever happened to you? Yes and no. So, just going to grab a couple of books. So, if this cuts, you know why. So off the top of my head, I can think of two books which have an introduction slash translator's note um, that explicitly mention plot points. The first of which is War and Peace. This is a book that I originally set out to read in 2020 and failed at miserably and I'm hoping to read in 2021, but we'll see. It actually does have a note that says 
if you've not read this book before and you want to not get spoiled read this bit at the end which I very much appreciated and I will do that the second book is A Clockwork Orange and this is the specific edition oh, this is the specific edition that I prefer and largely because it has a really well written introduction the problem is that introduction also discusses the differences between the film and the book I can't remember this book well enough to actually spoil it which again I wouldn't do anyway but I believe the film and the book have a different ending and it was a point of content contention when the film was being made I don't think I minded that the ending was spoiled in this book because it is the kind of book that is a journey but in answer to the question yes I have been spoiled by the introduction in a classic novel the next question asks has someone ever spoiled a novel for you Okay, so I'm going to call you out, Shannon, but in the nicest way possible. So my best friend, Shannon, her channel is Head in the Books, linked down below. She loves the Akatar series to the point that she has a hoodie that has all of the names of the inner circle on it, which is fine. Except it meant that I could basically tell you what was and wasn't going to happen whilst I was still reading the first book. The irony being, she bought me the Akatar trilogy because it is her favourite series and she wanted me to read it. I didn't mind, but also, yes, she did spoil it for me in a way. The next question is, have you ever spoiled a book for somebody else? Yes. Like, not in a nasty way and not deliberately. Well, actually, yes, deliberately. So, sometimes I feel like I need to talk about a book, especially if it's a really bad one. And... I've got no one to talk to about so I will tell my husband in painful detail everything about the book but it's fine because he also is okay with it so I don't know if that's really technically spoiling it I also so I've got a blog where I talk about books and I'm fairly inconsistent at updating it but there has been times where I've written a book review and then I've put spoilers at the end of it. I think where possible I will try to flag up if I am spoiling a book and then people can make an informed decision. But I've definitely talked about a book in spoilery detail before. The next question is if spoilers ruin novels, are there some authors or genres you can't reread? I don't tend to do many rereads. There's a few books that I love, one of them being the Darren, Sa Darren Shan saga, one of them being Empty World that you can just about see. It's that tiny book above the turquoise one. Um... And there's a few others that I like enough that I would reread. But generally, there's so many books in the world. I have so many books in my personal library that I don't get much chance to reread a book. But if I am rereading, either it's because I've forgotten enough that it's going to be as if I'm reading it for the first time 
or I'm rereading it for the love of it. In which case, it doesn't follow the same spoiler rules. Because I know what I'm expecting, I know what I'm going into. And sometimes that is the joy of a reread, is it's comfortable because you know things that are going to happen. The penultimate question is, when reviewing, are you spoiler free? Does this limit your ability to discuss? So clearly I'm a booktube newbie, but I have been writing on my blog for about a year and a half. And generally the answer is yes, I am spoiler free. But if I do feel like spoilers would add to the discussion or I've got some specific thoughts that relate to something spoilery, I will put a very clear break in the text and say anything be below this line is spoilery, proceed with caution. I think I would probably do something similar when it comes to videos and YouTube. I would start off with a very spoiler free discussion and then I would get into a spoiler filled discussion. Although I can't commit to that because at the point that I'm recording, I haven't made any videos that discuss books at that level. I've very briefly discuss the books that I read in March but nothing with enough detail that I could have potentially provided spoilers. Okay and the final question if you will is shout out tell us five channels you enjoy and then tag them. So at this point I only have one subscriber so this feels a little bit presumptuous and I'm not 100% sure who has and hasn't already done this tag. But first and foremost, got to tag my bestie, Shannon, over at Head in the Books. And then I would like to see Chloe at Chloe Reads Books do this. Um, I know that Maddie tagged her, and if she hasn't already, I would like to tag Becca at Becca and the Books to do this because I think it would be really interesting to see her do it. I would like to see Gav at How to Train Your Gavin do it. And I'm not sure. Maybe Kayla at Books and Lala. I think that could be an interesting video as well. I don't expect them to see this. But those are five people that I would like to see do this tag. Okay, and that's all from me. Until next time, bye!